Hey, welcome to another show of I, Walter. Um, I changed my bumper today because it was kind of funny. I, I had this song stuck in my head. It was from um, Psychedelic Furs. And yeah, it really just kind of like, you know what? I got to find out what this song is because I just remember the xylophone. I think it might have even been in that film uh, Pretty in Pink back in the day. Um, yeah, it was just something about it. I was like, okay, yeah, I got to look for this. And it was like, you know what? I might just, for this one show, I'll make that my bumper um, for the day and see how it sounds. Um, yeah, you know, it was kind of funny. Um, I have a couple things I guess I wanted to mention. Uh, tonight, though, was a disaster at work. Um, these two women that I work with, they work during a day. Uh, the, you know, they finally called on. Oh, my God, Walter's back at work. So let's see how, see how we can, you know, F with him. And, yeah, they did that. They, you know, props uh, trash up. They didn't do certain things deliberately. They left riding from the week before when I was uh, out sick for about eight days. And it finally, like, the, you know, basically, how else can I put it? The shit hit the fan, and I got stuck doing all this work. Um, the one woman, she was all had makeup. You're not supposed to wear makeup when we work because... You know, we're working on making medicine for people. I won't say where it is, but we're supposed to be making medicine for people. So technically, it's prohibited to wear any type of hair products or makeup for women. Well, this 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 woman, like, she had spandex on and she was decked out, ready to go. And it was like, this is like an hour or so before your shift is even done. So, um, and the, there was another girl um, that works during the day in my group and. A friend of mine told me that she was all like she got a new hair weave job and um, she was long gone before I even came in. So, you know, they figured, oh, well, Waller's back. We can start, you know, uh, taking advantage of him, you know, not doing our job and um, basically just giving him a hard time and make it look like he doesn't do anything. So, you know, it's just it gets really old. Um Folks, I mean, I work at a job, and I'm basically a glorified janitor. So are these other two people that um, I have to follow behind on second shift. And you know, you know, people don't like to disclose what they make, but I'm like, I'm the the lowest man on the totem pole on what we make, and I'm making thirty two dollars an hour. They're making that amount, and yet they don't want to do anything. Like the, it's too much of a hassle to do your job. And you get great benefits where I work. Again, I'm not going to mention it, but you know, you get great benefits. I am the you know the gum under your uh, under your shoe, the shit. I'm the bottom dweller at this place, and that's what you get paid. And yet they can't do their job, and it's not a difficult job. Trust me. If I ever lost a job I have now because of you know mass layoffs around the country, um, if it would ever affect me. Um, yeah, it would not be fun because I would not make the kind of money I'm making now for the kind of work I do. I would actually have to really work. And I work hard, but I have to work like five times, 20 times harder than I do now. And these people don't even do that. They don't even do 1% of what I do. So, yeah, you know, that's kind of funny. Hey, by the way, you know, it's been raining around here. Um, I don't know if I mentioned, but welcome to I, Walter. It is now Thursday morning because I got a late start. Uh, I was doing uh, some updates. You know, it's kind of funny with my – I have all Apple products at this point. I try to go back to a PC on a laptop and it's like, you know what, forget it. I just – it's going to sit and collect dust now because it's a nice machine, but it's not as good as Apple products. Um, I don't know how long that's going to last, but while it does, I'm going to enjoy it. Um Anyway, it was funny because I noticed at work I bought this cheap Apple laptop. I mean, it's it was like it was put in the gorilla cage from the Hamilton luggage commercials from back way back when. Um, the laptop is severely beaten. I bought it at this place called Micro Center. There's only one in each state. This one in our state is in St. David's. And um, it works far better than the PCs we have at our job. Anyway, I was like, I checked. I was like, oh, let me see if there's any software updates. And Apple has a tendency when they update one thing, um, their computers, they're also going to update their phones and their um, tablet PCs. 
why I don't know because they're two different things, but they work so close together. These units, you know, the the um, the what do you call it? The piece, uh, their Mac computers and their other devices. That even though the OS is different, they're also very work very close together, which is nice. Trust me. That was a problem we have at work, by the way. They bought a bunch of iPad Airs for our job. And a couple of them, they were making jokes tonight in our our meeting because a couple of them have disappeared. And they said, yeah, they literally walked away. Yeah. And they made the joke. Yeah, they walked by somebody holding them while they were walking because they couldn't walk by themselves. So that was pretty funny, though. Um, Excuse my voice tonight. I'm just, I don't have a voice. I have no clue why. Uh, yeah, and they're expensive. And it was like I was telling them, for what you're using it for, you don't really need the iPad Air. You could have got the cheaper one and uh, saved yourself tons of money. But this company that I work for just likes to waste a lot of money. So obviously because they got a bunch of deadbeats who don't want to work, and yet they don't fire them. Uh, and there's a reason for that. I'm not going to go because they'd probably give it away if I did. Eventually I'll probably slip here or there. Anyway, um, yeah, well, I put, uh, I looked at work and it was like it was too big for, you know, the company to handle this download because it was two gigs. It was like 2.02 gigs and it's for, I'm going to get this wrong, but the new OS from Apple, it's not new anymore. I think it's Yoshamini and um, yeah, so I had to do it on my laptop. Obviously, we got to do it on my laptop. I had to... Update my laptop. I updated my desktop computer at home. I actually gave one of my my computers, or actually two of them. I gave one to my mother and one to my father, um, two of my Apple computers I had. And um, they're going to have to be updated too. But, yeah, it had taken a while, trust me, because you might think nowadays, hey, two gigs isn't that much. But I hate to tell you, but back in the day when I first even got into computers, very first OS I ran was like, excuse me, it was like Windows 3.0, Windows 3.1, and Windows 3.11. And those fit on one floppy disk, which was basically, um, I think it was one floppy disk. Maybe it was like a couple, but not many. But the, each disk was like 1.44 uh, like megabytes, I think, if I remember correctly. So, yeah. And even when Windows 95 and 98 came out and OS 9 back in the day for Apple, that stuff fit on floppy disks. So, yeah, and OSs now are obviously a lot bigger than that. But for the longest time, an OS did get really big and it got up to about 8 gigs, which is really big for an OS. Because all that does is get you to where you want to go or what you want to do. So when you, you know, I mean, I think the OS for Apple at this point is about 8 or 10 gigs. So when you see 2 gigs for just an OS update, it actually rewrote a lot of the files for the OS system. Um, and it was, obviously, I looked and there was an update for my iPhone as well. I have the 6 Plus. I need it because I, I can't really see very well anymore because, I'm again, I'm 48 years old. So my eyesight wasn't as good as when I was younger. Um, anyway, yeah, there's there's a couple things I wanted to do more than just read news articles or just highlight them, uh, which I normally do anyway. Um, but I want to keep this at a, at a simple pace too, because I'm already at ten minutes of us. But yeah, today it was like I got home. It was like, oh, okay, it's trash night. And unfortunately, yeah, I'm 48 years old, but I, you know, I, well, it was a long time ago. I won't say how long, but. Um, I had moved out when I was probably in my late teens, early 20s, and then moved back home not too long afterwards. I just couldn't really afford to live on my own. So I've been living at home for a long time, and, um, you know, it it helped a lot because I didn't save any money, unfortunately. Um, but I did get to go through college because I always wanted to go further my education, and the first thing I did is, like, I didn't drive before. I walked because where I lived, I could walk everywhere. So when I moved back home when I was younger, uh, my parents said, well, you can move back home, but you're going to have to learn how to drive. It was like, whatever. But, yeah, when I first thing I did when I got my driver's license, that was, like, years ago, um, 
the next step was, okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to school because, you know, I want to further my education. So I ended up going to a local college, Montgomery County Community College, got my associate's degree. I actually almost had enough credits because I stayed there for so long to basically um, had enough credits for a double major. But I end up um, transferring. I looked for different schools at that point because I was there forever at Monco. You know, I was like one of the professional students that when I looked into different colleges, I actually got my first degree in, in um, human services. Basically, um, I wanted to become a counselor, which was kind of a joke because I tell you, I need counseling. So how am I going to counsel other people? Um, but I met some friends at at school, and they actually got me really interested in um, video production, you know, slash same idea for film production. And I changed my major to communications, which that's what I got my four-year degree in from Cabrini. But when, before I even transferred, I basically looked into these different schools. Um, and uh, I even went to like, uh, what was it, Westchester, I think I might have checked out. Kutztown, which I heard was a party school, but they were supposed to have a really good degree in communications. But I looked at it. Now, this was years ago, but even back then it was outdated. Uh, their communications department had cameras like from the 50s. And I'm not that old. But yeah, they were old television cameras from like like TV stations that were donated to them, but they were so ancient. And then they had a computer lab which, if you're familiar with these, they had these computers called Packard Bells. Well, Packard Bells used to have the nickname Packard Hell because I liked them, but they were pieces of shit computers, and that's what this school used as their mainframe computers. Like, and I, when I went to Cabrini, their, their main computers were like Apple computers and stuff at the time that had OS 9, but, you know, that's definitely a step above a Packard Bell computer. So, you know, Packard Bells are meant for home use and that's meant for, you know, the consumer who doesn't want to spend a whole heck of a lot of money on a computer. And that's what they had. So I was like, okay. And they were only going to take a handful of my credits. So I said, you know what? Forget this. I'm not going there. So I looked into Cabrini and they had taken the most credits they actually took, had taken, I think up to 67 credits at the time. So, hey, that makes me an automatic junior when I transfer. Because some schools, they only take like 20-some credits and maybe even less. Maybe 33 if you're really lucky. But, yeah, Cabrini was just like so desperate for more guys, males to go to their college because it was an all-girls school years ago. And it became co-ed. Um, that they you know said oh you're a male and my GPA at the time was like over a 3.0 which is a B average because I got a lot of A's and B's um, that they said hey we're take you know we'll give you a scholarship if you come to our school and we're take 67 credits and I was like okay you got me on the 67 credits you don't even have to talk about anything else because that means I'm spending less time in school at that point um, anyway yeah it was kind of funny tonight I come home and why I mentioned how this all got started was, um, I'm not going to go into grave details, but, you know, you know, I'm a single guy, um, been single most of my life. I've had maybe a handful of girlfriends, if, if less, if not less, um, and most of them never lasted more than a very short period of time. So, you know, single guy, and most people that are single are going to go through this. So, you know, you how can I put it in the kind of way you take care of business and you try to do it as discreetly as possible? Well, if you have parents like mine, you have like Inspector Clouseau and um, um, Sherlock Holmes. I'm just being sarcastic. They are so nosy. They have to put their nose in everything. So, you know, um, I found out a tactic to quote unquote, take care of business um, the joke of spanking the monkey, whatever you want to call it. And basically, um, you know, when I'm done, I got a little waste basket that I put in my room so I wouldn't, you know, you know, you, oh, you can flush it down the toilet. Well, no, I came up with this strange tactic that works much more efficiently. Um, don't have to worry about chafing, and I'm not going to go into that detail. So it leaves a little bit more than just tissues. So, 
It's some strange scientific theory I came up with years ago. I'm being sarcastic about it, but yeah, if you really break it down, it was a scientific theory. I should probably actually patent it because if I did, I probably could make some money off my idea. Um, you know, the most effective way to masturbate for guys. So anyway, um, yeah, it leaves like a little bit of a mess. So I got a little waste basket with lid because it stinks after a while. I'm not trying to be graphic. And, you know, I just chuck it in the waste basket. But then I have this trash bag that I just piled in. And tonight and on Thursdays, well, this is Thursday, um, you know, I take the trash and I, you know, I used to just throw, chuck it in the trash can. But then my parents, like my father, he's got to go uh, digging for apples. So he, I'm being sarcastic. I'm, I'm not even making a good analogy. But he's like literally uh, digging through my the, the garbage can to see what I threw out. So they have this whole thing, that this whole spiel that they think that I'm doing something out of anger or frustrate or, you know, being angry or like I'm some psychotic killer and they don't have no clue what's going on and I don't want them to know. So it was like, okay, that's where I got into this place of I'm going to get my own trash can. Um, I'll get rid of my um, demon seed leftovers and put it in this bag and then I'll just chuck it out when they're in bed. So that would be tonight. So I do that stuff, but then I found out that the bag I throw all my um, remains, human remains, um, demon seed uh, bag, or whatever you want to call it, um, I found out my, my dad actually goes out in the morning hours before the trash bin comes, and he digs through the trash can, knowing that I do this, and her take the trash bag that I put all my evil remains in and he actually reuses those brags he brings he actually took because i had had taken he had taken out of the trash can like a whole mess of my mess and the bags that are in he takes those bags and he doesn't realize what's in the on those bags and he's using those in the garage and our you know because we leave our trash cans in our garage so it, it really stinks for one thing. It, it smells really bad. And he's like, he and he's cheap too. So I'm sorry, it's my father, you know, but he is extremely cheap. He's retired, so is my mother. Um, so to him, it's like, why are you throwing this trash bag out? Well, there's a purpose because one, I don't want you to know, that I, so I bought my own trash bags. Two, the stuff that's in that trash bag, you don't want to touch it. So, but he does because to him that's a waste of money to throw that garbage bag out that has is filled with a bunch of um, male um, goo. So, yeah, I mean that's just it's it's disgusting alone, but it's just pathetic how cheap he is. So I have to do, deal with that in the next few hours that her go out. But he what he did was I he got like I save the bags I recycle my bags, not my trash bags. Um, that I throw my evil remains in, but my, you know, bags you get from the store, why well, will use those for work to put my lunch in? They're different bags. Or for, like, I bring a, a clean pair of underwear and socks is all. Before I get home, we have showers at work. I put my clothes that I worked in all day, my underwear, dirty underwear, in the bag. So I, bottom line is I, I save bags. You know, I recycle the bags by reusing them. Until they fall apart, and then then I'll just recycle them. Period. So he took had taken one of my bags. It was a bag actually, ironically, from Micro Center. And what does he do? He actually stuffed. Uh, he accumulated a whole bunch of the bags over the weeks that I was putting my evil remains in, and he was reusing those bags as trash bags uh, to put garbage in in the garbage can. So it's like, okay, that's filled with. Male goo, semen, whatever you want to call it, and um, happy ending, and they're, um, he's reusing them. It's like, that is really disgusting. You know, it's my stuff, and, you know, um, what I do with my garbage is my business. I didn't expect him to dig through and put it back out again, so, or use it, reuse trash bags that, you know, whatever was in there, he doesn't give a f- shit about but you know who reused the bag because that's a waste of money i mean that's that's beyond cheap so anyway it just it drives me crazy with him and her to my mother and that's the problem about living at home when you're almost 50 but hey 
I have a cousin who's actually 10 years older than most of me, and he's never moved out of the house. Um, heaven forbid, he's a nice guy, and I feel bad for him, but yeah, he's really spoiled. Well, he's not spoiled. He's just been more baby than I am. I'm pretty well babied from my parents, so um, yeah. Anyway, I went too long off about that, so I'm probably going to go just read the highlights of some stories. I'm not going to really go into grave detail. Um, yeah, so it, it was just a nightmare night. Um, I don't know what else to say. Let me see where I'm at because I'm probably already over my limit. Yep, I'm over my limit already. Um, so uh, real funny is funny stories, though, that I read. You can find these on, on YouTube if you get the right links. Especially that Huffington Post. There's one that says grilled cheese lovers have more sex and are better people. And I looked at this and it's like, you got to be kidding. So it's, yeah, it's it, that was the title of the thing. It was on that Huffington Post. And it basically states, um, if you love grilled cheese, you may have more sex than people who don't love grilled cheese. I love grilled cheese, but guess what? Um, the only sex I have is with myself. And you know what? That's funny mentioned in that. I always like it bothers me when I see people that are amputees, so to speak, I guess. Would that be what it's called? But they, um, you know, you see a person, a guy especially, who loses his arm or his hand. I, I saw one time this guy had both hands removed. And it was like that would be a hell for me because you lose your hands. That's like that's my life. That is my my. What makes me motivated to get out of bed the next morning is my hands because of taking care of business. And if that was gone, it was like, what the? How can these people even think of living anymore? Because you just lost the only thing that's worth living. Because I'm never going to find, you know, a woman. So at this point, so I just figured that that that's a fate worse than hell. That's worse than purgatory for me. So. Um, and thank God they haven't made that, I don't think yet, is uh, illegal to masturbate. Because when they start doing that, that would be another death of me. I'll have to, like, just end my life then and there. Anyway, excuse me about my voice again. Um, yeah, this story, by the way, it just says, in fact, the grilled cheese preference can reveal a lot about how you get busy. Well, I get busy probably from eating grilled cheese, but not with anybody else. Meaning women, you know, I have nothing against people that are homosexual, but it, it's not my taste. Anyway, according to a new survey by Dayton Social Networks sites, and it says Scott, I think it's S K O U O, like, yeah, S K O U T. I never even heard of that one. Uh, cheese heads get more action. Well, you know what? Rude Awakening. No, I don't. So, um, and I love grilled cheese. So. I'm not going to read more because it just get me more upset. It will get me upset. What am I saying? Um, yeah, there was some funny thing I saw. It's not funny, but it was interesting. And again, I'm already going over time that I want to go. Ten of the most torturous methods of execution. There's some really interesting ones. Um, I'm just going to kind of go through these really quickly because at this point, um, I'm over my time limit. Um, Florida Streaker um, was another story. This was on um, Huffington Post also. Uh, high on Flocka, um, some new type of um, illegal drug. And it says police in Florida, uh, Fort Lauderdale. This guy like was so out. It's got to be like a new type of crack or coke, I assume. Um, some type of meth or whatever. Um, homemade meth or something like that because it just makes people go crazy. But yeah, that story I'll probably have to go in further detail on another day because I'm not gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go over my limit. I already am. Um, yeah, I'm getting there very close. Anyway, really quickly, I'm not gonna read the whole thing. There was a story on Philly Fox News. They were looking for this guy dressed up like a woman in a blonde wig, and it said Santa Cruz police search for Mrs. Doubtfire bank robber. I wish I had time to go into detail about this stuff, but I won't. Um, other stuff I would have gotten into more detail, but there was another story from Kevin Smith's website about um, Brian O'Halloran doing Mulrats 2. Um, they're talking about a reboot of Gremlins, the movie. These are all things I'm not just going to have time to go in. The one I really wanted to talk about, and actually it was probably a soundbite, which I won't now, Check this story out, though, because it actually happened in Canada 
where this guy was chasing uh, threatened parents and children running with a chainsaw. And they actually show the guy start up the chainsaw. Now, this was in Quebec, Canada. And that was in the Huffington Post. So the, the family actually videotaped this guy chasing with a chainsaw, this 37-year-old man. So that was pretty funny. Not funny for them, but it was funny. Either way, um, if I had more time, I would have read this story. But it says where uh, this secret tunnel hidden inside wardrobe leads to a very worse, worrying thing for Americans. Well, we would have guessed what it was. Um, it was on the border on uh, – it's in Tijuana, Mexico. They were actually making a uh, tunnel from Mexico into the U.S., they found this tunnel that was being dug out, uh, you know, so they could just basically walk under the ground, you know, like the underground tunnel back from the slave times. But this this was a way to get into the U.S. from Mexico. <coughs> anyway, there's like a ton of other stories. I'm definitely not going to have time to read any of them because I'm actually at my 26th mark. Uh, another story real quick, just maybe tomorrow I'll read it. It was a Huffington Post. It says ex-congressional uh, aide gets... No jail time for sex assaults. Um, I'm not validating that this man was like sexually assaulting women, but he had acid thrown in his on his face, on his head, and it is really brutal looking. This poor guy is like a mess. Um, yeah, I felt really bad. I mean, I'm not I'm not saying what he did was right, but I'm just saying I don't care what he did. But that doesn't give you a right to, like, do, um, you know, two wrongs don't make a right. That's the bottom line. And a friend used to tell me that. And this would be one of those cases. Anyway, um, wish I had more time, but it, there was some uh, little uh, leaked or in some information that I didn't know this, by the way. But Daredevil is going to be a Netflix, uh, Netflix original TV series. And, you know, they've done that with a couple other shows. But that really kind of caught my interest. Um, yeah, it definitely did. Um, again, I'm, I basically ran out of time at this point. So there was like a, a whole crap load of stories I really wanted to read. But you know what? At this point, I'm, I'm not going to have time. Um, I'm going to try to push my lock because I'm already hitting that limit. Um, there was something about uh, – let me just read this, the caption because this was really interesting because I didn't even know this. But it was in Fox Philly News. It says, South Jersey father pushes message against just distracted driving after losing his daughter. Well, what's that mean? It's bad that the, the guy lost his daughter. She wasn't even the driver. She was one of the passengers. She, she died at 18. But the part that really got to me, which I am running really close at this point, I might not be able to put it on Spreaker, um, was the amount of people. Okay, let me just read this one thing. I'm going to let it go then, you know, my show for tonight. Um, every given moment in America, there are 600,000 people on their phones driving and not looking at the road. Folks, that is really crazy, though. Um, that is a lot of people. So anyway, I ran out of time, so I hope you enjoy my show, and please listen in or comment. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow night. Okay. Have a good one.